forgot. Go ahead and start my presentation. Okay, now playing presentation by Manu Kache on Apple Music. No, no, uh, pull up my slides for my TEDx talk. Now calling Ted Slides in, mobile. No, no, so, Ted Slides in, just play my slides. I'm sorry, I can't play the slide whistle. A little help. Ah, how many of you have had a frustrating experience like that with your tech recently? <laughs> the technology we use every day is miraculous. And most of the changes we've seen over the last decade were driven forward by artificial intelligence. AI played a significant role in helping discover the compound that was most effective as a vaccine against COVID-19. AI is being used in response to climate change, from discovering the optimal usage of energy in buildings to using image recognition to monitor deforestation rates. AI tools are helping us deal with and even reverse some of climate change's negative effects. Listen, I get it. On the one hand, all the hype you hear about AI makes it seem like it's going to destroy the world. On the other hand, my seven-year-old can't get Siri to play the soundtrack to the movie The Descendants without it instead playing the music of a punk rock band with the same name. <laughs> I believe the first step in addressing the issues surrounding artificial intelligence is knowledge. Once you understand how these tools work, even at a basic level, you can join the conversation and help us nerds figure out how we can take these truly amazing tools and incorporate them into society. Let's talk about an AI technology that's been around for a little while. It's called natural language processing. It's the core piece of technology that powers voice assistants like Siri and Alexa. Take our example of playing music. Before you even begin talking, your voice assistant is using its microphone to listen for its trigger phrase. I'm not gonna say what the trigger phrase is, everyone's phones here would blow up. <laughs> Once it hears its trigger phrase though, it immediately begins taking everything you say and transcribing it into text. It then takes that text and runs it through a series of sophisticated algorithms that are all intended to help you figure out what you're actually trying to get at. Once it determines an intent, it matches it to an action it knows how to do. So, let's say if I were to shout, play Descendants, well, it can pretty easily figure out that play is an action related to music. Descendants, on the other hand, is not as clear. Do you mean the Descendants soundtrack? Do you mean music by the band Descendants? Do you mean music by another band named Descendants? Do you mean a song with the word Descendants in it? You get the picture. If instead I were to shout, play the Descendants 2 soundtrack, that's a much more clear ask that's more likely to result in what you're looking for. So, what's the big secret to using natural language processing? The way you phrase things matters, so be clear and specific. Of course, natural language processing is not the artificial intelligence tool that's on everyone's mind lately. That honor goes to large language models, which powers the most hyped AI tool of the past year, ChatGPT. A large language model is a system trained on tons of text to understand and generate human-like written language. Think of a large language model as a really smart friend who has read millions of books, articles, and websites. When you ask this friend a question, they don't just spit back facts that they've read. Instead, they try to think of the most cohesive answer based on everything they've read. If you were to ask a large language model, why is the sky blue? It's not going to spit back a pre-canned answer. Instead, it's going to recall patterns. It's going to remember reading about light scattering, the atmosphere, the way our eyes perceive color. It's then going to take those pieces and form a creative response that best matches your prompt. Large language models can do this for millions of queries by understanding context, recognizing patterns, and then creatively assembling an answer. When you think about it, large language models do what most of us do when we're asked a question. Here, let's be a large language model together, shall we? 
I'm going to throw a prompt up on the screen, and on the count of three, I want you all to shout out what you think best finishes the prompt. Ready? I'm going to the store to pick up a gallon of one. All right, I heard a lot. <laughs> I heard milk, I heard ice cream, all perfectly reasonable answers, and some maybe unreasonable answers. <laughs> Let's try this again. I'm going to give you a different prompt. Then I'm going to subtly change it just a little bit. And let's see how it goes, OK? Here we go. I'm going to the hardware store to pick up a gallon of? There. I heard my son say ice cream, so I'm going, <laughs> going to the right store. Uh, paint is what I came up with. But again, there are plenty of perfectly reasonable answers that can finish that prompt. Now, the way you answered the first prompt is probably different than the way you answered the second prompt, unless you're my son. <laughs> and it's all because I gave you one additional word of context, which allowed you to better answer my prompt. So now that you understand how large language models work, let's talk about some applications of this tool. Now, you're all probably familiar with the low-hanging fruit of large language models. Students using it to cheat on their essays. Companies using it to power their horrible chatbots. Employees using it to write their passive aggressive emails and make them sound a little more polite. <laughs> but there's plenty of other applications that you may not have considered. I used a large language model to be my health plan benefits manager, where I fed it in the details of the insurance plans that my employer offers, and then it had a conversation with me in order to determine the best plan for me and my family. This, this may shock you, but I also used a large language model to write this very talk. <laughs> I fed it through multiple versions of prompts, each one aimed at making this talk more approachable, understandable, and impactful. Well, large language models can do so much, but they can't do everything yet. They're not good at math. They don't know about things that happened after they were trained. And even if you do ask it about something it does know about, it's prone to what we call hallucinations. Because again, it's not spitting back a pre-canned answer. It's generating its response based off of its understanding of your prompt. So what's the big trick to using large language models? Provide enough context and be as clear as possible with what you ask for. The more clear you can be, the better your prompt is going to return back something that you're expecting. So now you know how large language models and natural language processing work. But even with your newfound knowledge, you may still get frustrated when the tech doesn't work like it's supposed to. And that's OK. The hiccups and frustrations we experience with artificial intelligence is not a new phenomena. Every significant leap in technology comes with its frustrations and moments of humor. Put yourself back in the early 20th century as cars entered the scene. A lot of the same things people were worried about back then mirror what we're worried about today. They were terrified of their speed, worried about replacing jobs, afraid of how it would change their lives. But over time, we built infrastructure to address many of these problems. And today, yes, there are still car accidents. And there is still a major contribution to climate change. But it's really hard to imagine a society without cars. If we want to similarly leverage the benefits of artificial intelligence, we need to take a balanced, educated approach to how we incorporate these technologies into our own lives. Listen, I get it. Change is hard. As a millennial, I've lived through many changes in my life from the rise of the internet, to the uh, birth of social media networks, to having the world's intelligence right in the palm of my hand. Each one of these leaps brought many changes to my life, both voluntarily and as mandated by societal pressures. I mean, try being a kid in 2004 without a MySpace, am I right? <laughs> Adopting our lives to new technologies requires a bit of optimism and a ton of curiosity. None of this stuff is going to work right out of the gate without us changing our lives, our attitudes, and our expectations. Finally, I want to leave you all with this. How many of you have ever said the phrase, 
I am not a tech person. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you are a human. The use of tools is deeply embedded in your genes. After you strip away all the hype, AI is just another tool. And you are more than capable of understanding how it works at a basic level. Do not let technology intimidate you from participating in this AI-powered world. Embrace it. Explore it. Question it. And most important, be part of helping to shape its ethical and inclusive future. Because at the end of the day, technology is only as good, as innovative, and as compassionate as the humans who use it. Thank you.